Hello, friends, enemies, and men, women, undecided. You are watching the best, most fun interactive show on YouTube. It's not the Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Allen, Jimmy Corden, or Jimmy Colbert show. You're watching The Right Show. Yes. We come to you every Wednesday. This is going simulcast on Rockfin, Facebook, podcasting on iTunes, and YouTube. Get involved by putting your comments in the chats. I highlight them on the screen. You're a part of the show and you make it go. This is not just a podcast or a vodcast or whatever you want to call it. This is a support group for normal people. Today, we're going to give you a little update. 382,000 subscribers on YouTube. That went up just in the last week. Facebookers, 217,500. Instagram, 111,000. And TikTok, TikTok, however you want to pronounce that, 115K. The podcast today will cover the following topics. Chinese spies from China trying to steal your mind's elation. Name that band. Biden ruins the state of the onion. Black History Month feast goes awry, and we include two, not just one, but two bonus comedy clips. It's all happening right here, right now on The Right Show. So TikTokers turned comedy into a very cheesy art form where you just throw a comedy clip up for 5, 10, 15 seconds. Now, I'm old school. We used to have to get our hour good or 20 minutes pretty good for Comedy Central's half hour specials because of the commercial break. So 22 minutes of comedy, 8 minutes of commercials, boom, that's a half hour special. But with the advent of TikTok, nobody watches TV. Everyone just goes swipe, swipe, swipe. So it's okay now to do comedy clips in 10, 15, 20 second increments. Well, I was against it at first, but everybody started eating my lunch with these viral videos. The algorithm started helping anybody who did a short form video. So I'm doing it now too. Enjoy me selling out. I feel good. I know I'm getting older, but I'm not old. And there's little signs that we're getting older. Like the other day I invited a girl over to Netflix and chill and that's all we did. It was awesome. <laughs> oh, that's all we did. We didn't even want to do anything else. She was looking at me like, can I get some? No girl. I said Netflix and chill. Damn. All right. With that said, it's time to get right into it. The Right Show, a support group for normal people. Before we start, I need to know where do you live and who is your favorite black person this Black History Month? It could change by the end of the month, but for now, put it in the chats. We'll read those in a minute. Did you know a Chinese spy balloon was flying over the United States for the last week? It's a very interesting thing that happened. 
I want you to hear what the news was all about. They finally shot it down. They recovered it. Take a look. Take a look at this. The U.S. Navy just released new images of the Chinese spy balloon that they recovered in the waters off of South Carolina. It's pretty... I, I, this is really intriguing to see. You'd have to be naive not to realize that this was intentional by China in an attempt to spy on the United States. In terms of what we're learning, last year in April, there was a report from the Air Force called People's Republic of China High Altitude Balloons. Now, it's crucial to point out that what's unclear from this report is when the U.S. realized it was a Chinese surveillance balloon, and the Pentagon believed that that was the intent behind the balloon. And that gets at another point here that the Pentagon said yesterday. General Glenn Van Herc, the commander of Northern Command and NORAD, said there was what he called an awareness gap that allowed China to fly balloons. The awareness gap is the 75, 78, 80-year-old man going, No, there's, there's a balloon for me from China. Not a joke, man. Now... Up until a week ago, we'd never talked about balloons being used for spying. But here we go. The Chinese, very clever. They released a virus. They released a balloon. They keep ruining our birthday. Hmm. And now I'm sure other countries are going to get in on this. I, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a Mexican spy pinata coming our way soon. Be on the lookout, kids. Also a Russian poison kazoo. <laughs> And let's not forget a Pakistani spy birthday cake. Go on, I wanted to put it on the table so we can hear what you're saying, Mr. President. I bet it'll never end. Now, a lot of you are wondering, Kayvon, how did the spy balloon finally come down? Well, I have some very rare footage of it. I'm going to show you who brought the spy balloon down. You're not going to believe this, but guess so. Thank you, President Trump. You never cease to amaze us. With that said, I am going on tour. If you like my stand-up comedy, my special brand of humor, I highly recommend you find one of these cities. Get your tickets or send a friend or family member. Take a look right here. Now, Provo, Utah is tomorrow. We have the whole auditorium. And on a Thursday night, I'm proud to tell you we have 350 people already coming. We can still pack another 100, 150 in there. So that's my goal in 2023. I want to get 1,000 people per city to try to come see me. Now, you're saying, Kayvon, that's crazy, 1,000. Well, not it's not that hard, really. Think of a town like Chicago. Now, if I do one show Thursday, two Friday, two Saturday, that's five shows. How many people per night need to come laugh at a comedy club to sell 1,000 tickets per major city in a five show weekend. I'll let you guys do that math. Now, some cities, you even add a Saturday show. So you get a, a sixth show that makes the math even harder. A thousand divided by six. I'll let you guys who have done common core math, figure that out. After Provo, I go to Colorado Springs, San Diego, La Jolla is how it's pronounced. Very rich area. Then I'm in Des Moines, which is a place in Iowa. Never heard of it. Sacramento, San Jose, Tampa, Arlington, Virginia, and Reno, Vegas, Boca Raton, on and on. Those are all on my website, kvoncomedy.com. I mispronounce each city on purpose. Don't correct me in the comments, please. When we come back, a whole lot more of TRS, The Right Show. It's time to talk about the state of the onion. Joe Biden gave one of the worst speeches of all time, but first he had to prepare to give that speech and Democrats proved once again, they truly deep down believe walls work. The reason they don't want walls, they don't want a physical barrier is so they can use drones to watch the immigrants illegally cross and then illegally take jobs, illegally not pay taxes, and then illegally get into the voting system one way or another the people who are the most downtrodden tend to vote Democrat because they're taking tax dollars from the American people, divvying them out for votes. If you don't know that's what's going on, you're a moron. The border is left open on purpose by the Democrats to prove walls work. Watch this.
So if walls don't work, why does Joe Biden demand one get put up every time he comes back to town? Doesn't make sense. He should tear down the wall, put up cameras, and you can just shoot people in the leg if they're coming over. And not a joke. My dad said, Joe, you can do that. That's pop pop. That was corn pop. Folks, if that wasn't bad enough, the state of the onion got even worse. Kamala's husband kissed Jill Biden's old lips. Watch it. See, now Dr. Jill, you know, she's going to get hovid because that guy's been kissing Kamala. It just goes around and around. Now, remember, the Democrats were the party up until five months ago of we have to wear a mask everywhere we go. Not just one mask, two masks. Dr. Fauci's orders. Then you had to wear gloves, sanitize. I mean, there are still some Democrats out there who are so brainwashed from the last two years that they are scared to death. And Joe and all the other Democrats said, COVID is never going away. It's always going to be here. So it's, it's it Trump's like, one day, I believe one day it'll go away. It'll go away. Things go away. As things do, things naturally go away. And the Democrats said, it's never going away, you idiot. <laughs> well, apparently it went away. People are kissing and licking Kamala Harris's husband's lips. And we don't know where those have been. If that wasn't bad enough, the state of the onion got even worse when Joe Biden started mumbling, stumbling, and telling lies to the point where people finally had to fact check him in real time. The press isn't gonna do it, then the people will. Take a look at Joe Biden lying about Republicans wanting to take away Social Security. Instead of making the wealthy pay their fair share, some Republicans, some Republicans want Medicare and Social Security to sunset. I'm not saying it's a majority. <laughs> Let me give you, anybody who doubts it, contact my office. I'll give you a copy. I'll give you a copy of the proposal. That means Congress doesn't vote. Well, I'm glad to see you. No, I tell you, I, I enjoy conversion. You know, it means if, if Congress doesn't keep the programs the way they are, they'd go away. Other Republicans say, I'm not saying it's a majority of you. I don't even think it's even a significant... But it's being proposed by individuals. I'm not politely not naming them, but it's being proposed by some of you. Look, folks, the idea is that we're not going to be we're, we're not going to be moved into being threatened to default on the debt if we don't respond. Folks. That is why they say, let's go, Brandon. You can get those shirts on my website, caveoncomedy.com, under the shop, because this guy lies. He says the Republicans are trying to take away Social Security. Vote for me. Not a joke. Give you free money, folks. Come on. Fences don't work. Got one outside. Well, not only is he a huge liar, Joe Biden has been the one who's been trying for 35 years to end Social Security. And he saw how unpopular it was, and it was such a losing argument, that now he's doing a thing called gaslighting or projecting. He's saying, oh, everyone else said this, when indeed it was Biden. Take a look at what he used to say. Unbelievable. Let me ask you a question, Joe. Yeah. You're right here with me. Yeah. Have you been on the floor of the Senate? You were in the Senate for a few years. Yeah. Time and time again, talking about the necessity with pride about cutting Social Security, cutting Medicare, cutting veterans programs. No. You never said that? No. When I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans benefits. I meant every single solitary thing in the government. Look, here's the deal. You're an honest guy. Why don't you just tell the truth here? We all I, make mistakes. I, I am telling the truth. And I not only tried it once, I tried it twice, I tried it a third time, and I tried it a fourth time. Joe, let me repeat it again. I want you just to be straight with the American people. I am saying that you have been on the floor of the Senate time and time again talking about the need to cut Social Security, Medicare, and veterans programs. Is that true or is that no, not true? No, it's not true. What that is, is not true? That is not true. I meant veterans, but I meant every single solitary thing in the government. 
everything was on the table. I did not support any of those cuts in Social Security or in veterans. Whoa, benefits. whoa, whoa. You, you, everything was on the table. All right, you're right. You just said it, including, in your judgment, cuts to Social Security and veterans. In order to get the kinds of changes we need on other okay. things related... Joe, then but, you just, but we did not cut it. I, I know, because people like me helped stop that. All that I would say to the American people, go to YouTube. It's all over the place. Joe said it many, many times. And I'm surprised, you know, you can defend that or change your mind on it, but you can't deny the reality. How sad that even Bernie Sanders can be truthful when it comes to Joe Biden. He's always wanted to take your Social Security, whatever he can do to lie and cover it up. You know, he was anti-gay. Now he's pro-gay. He was always for traditional marriage. Now he says he always wanted trans marriage since he was a young kid. When I was little, my you see gay guys at the old steel mill just going to town. And my, my pop said, Joe, that's true love. They're, they're riveting each other's... Uh, they're nuts and bolts over there. Come on, not a joke. Truly happened. So if you still believe this idiot, then you are one too. We'll be back with a whole lot more of TRS, The Right Show. When will the lies stop? Unbelievable. Now, while Joe Biden was lying about Social Security on the floor of the State of the Onion, there was a violent insurrection. Trans activists took over the Oklahoma Capitol. They had, um, the Capitol. The Oklahoma Capitol. They had no right to be there. They did not have permits. They were not invited. And they stormed the Capitol. They got in there. They refused to leave. And they were shouting and scaring people. This was one of the most violent transurrections of our time. Take a look. Now, since they are on the radical left, they're screaming trans lives matter. They have trespassed. They have caused an insurrection. Uh, will they be held in court? Uh, or will they be held in jail with no court case? Uh, will they be kept from a the right to a speedy and fair trial? No, not at all. Because in this country, we now have political prisoners for the first time ever. It is completely sad. Well, we're not going to get sad on this show. All right. We need to uh, just understand that there are two sets of rules. Know that they're going to cheat, they're going to lie, and they're going to try to throw you in jail. So be more clever than the people who are out to get you. Now, let's make this uh, a little bit more fun. A good Samaritan was running on the freeway, which kind of shocked me at first. I'm like, why is this guy running? And how do you run on a freeway and think you're going to catch up to a car? But he did. And he actually helped stop the car from driving. I guess the driver passed out and was just zigzagging and then ended up in the ditch and kept driving. Watch. An incredible act of bravery caught on camera. A man sprinting across several lanes of Interstate 93 near Boston, dodging traffic to save a driver in distress. Si se me presenta, dia mil veces más lo hago. Adolfo Molina is the man running alongside the blue car as it speeds in the shoulder next to the median. Molina trying to open one of the doors. He says he first noticed the driver unconscious behind the wheel. Ahí yo me doy cuenta de que la mujer va inconsciente y mareada, chocando con la pared, con la... Ventana, see? That's when he pulled over his own truck to help. The risky move, a dangerous attempt, but Molina believes his own safety was in the care of someone else's hands. Fue como algo de Dios que me, que me protegió en ese transcurso. His wife, Maite, thinking about what could have happened. The first thing that came to my mind was, oh my God, and then I was like, oh my God, I would have became a widow and my children. Eventually, another driver was able to help Molina bring the car to a stop until police arrived. The 25-year-old Uber driver, originally from the Dominican Republic, honored by his local mayor and the Dominican consulate in Boston for his bravery. Dice Dominicano destacado en el exterior, el Instituto Dominicano y Dominicano en el exterior, INDA, reconoce con orgullo a... Adolfo Molina Burgos, 
Molina hoping he gets the chance to reconnect with that driver. But for now, he's grateful for the outpouring of support to the now viral video seen more than a million times. Muchas gracias a todo lo, a todo lo que me han comentado, todo lo que me han dado un like en TikTok. Valerie Castro, NBC News. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the end. I don't care about his YouTube channel. Folks, that was amazing. That is what we should celebrate in this country. Not your hair color or your sexuality or your skin color, but acts of bravery, charity, and vigilance. Something good, not just like, oh, well, she's a half trans, half black. No, none of that matters, folks. None of that matters, which brings us to black. History Month. Only one color in this whole country gets a whole month. Even though they want to be treated equal, they also want separate and beneficial stuff. And this is indeed Black History Month. But you can't please everybody all the time. A middle school in New York tried to serve a traditional African-American meal as best as they could understand it. And... They were roundly criticized for what they did. I'm going to tell you this story, which just appeared, and you tell me if you agree or disagree. New York School apologizes after kicking off Black History Month with fried chicken and watermelon. A New York middle school and its food vendor are apologizing for serving fried chicken and watermelon for lunch on the first day of Black History Month. So this upset quite a few people. Um, they said, we understand now that this was culturally insensitive. Students at Nyack Middle School were treated to waffles, watermelon, and other foods stereotypically associated with black people. After Aramark, the school's food vendor changed the menu items without telling all the school's administrators. Now that sounds like a cover up to me. Pretty sure everybody wanted chicken, watermelon, and collard greens with waffles. And then when it got hot, they're like, they did it, not me, the old Joe Brandon. The offering of chicken and waffles as an entree with watermelon on dessert on the first day of Black History Month was inexcusable, insensitive, and reflected a lack of misunderstanding of our district's vision to address the racial bias that we are all associated with on a daily basis, the school said in that accent. And when asked for comment the kids said they loved it they said it was the best chicken and waffles they'd ever had and they thanked the school for offering it so which side are you on please put it in the comments if the kids like the meal then why are parents getting involved in forcing their racism on a great day Day of school lunch. Let's see what the news a has mother to say. reassuring her daughter after a racially insensitive lunch option was served at Nyack Middle School the first day of Black History Month. Tell you the truth, I'm sick and tired of it all because I'm black, as you can see, and I'm the head of the department who gave the okay for the chicken waffles and watermelon. Everything ain't got to be racist, man. Everything ain't got to be racist. Instead of Philly cheesesteak, broccoli, and fresh fruit, Aramark, the food service company that provides meals to the district, served chicken and waffles and watermelon. Back in 2018, another racially insensitive meal was served at New York University during Black History Month. It included barbecued ribs, collard greens, cornbread, Kool-Aid, and watermelon-flavored water. But listen, come Monday, all you, all you kids, Y'all gonna have a choice of mystery meat on a stick and rice. Now, hey, I like this comment right here. Racism is in the eye of the beholder. You know, on Cinco de Mayo, if they offered tacos, burritos, and churros, I wouldn't complain. I'd be first in line saying, yo quiero more, por favor. So uh, if you want to be a part, if you want people to embrace the culture and enjoy things like the burritos and the tacos and the churros, then that's kind of the culture a little bit. I don't know, Persian day, if we had Persian day at school, I would love if they had kebab, pita bread, rice, zeresh polo, gourmet sabzi, tadik, chiguni, I want to have a yogurt, okay? I wouldn't be like, man, why y'all include me in giving food items that are typically known for us? I hate our food. I hate what we're known for.
People go to chicken and waffles and spend big bucks at Roscoe's in Los Angeles, California. And if you've never been there, I highly recommend it. So was it racist or are race hustlers trying to sue the school, the city, the superintendent, and Aramark Food Services? You be the judge. Put it in the comments. I can't wait to read what you have to say. This comment section going to be lit. Black History Month was going so well for about a week, but it's already gone off the rails. A mother, African-American mother, tried to celebrate her daughter's sweet 16 by giving her a very sweet gift, a brand new Tesla. But when you raise people to think they're victims and they used to be slaves and everybody owes them something, they have a chip on their shoulder where they can't even accept a nice gift. I want you to watch this girl looking at a brand new Tesla her mom bought her. They don't even live in really nice, fancy places. They put every last dime into the car, and she still says, mm-mm. <laughs> I didn't want a Tesla. I don't, want, I don't like electric cars. Wait, I what? I like Mercedes-Benz. I don't like Tesla. You like, you said you like the electric I cars. I said I like Tesla. I said a Mercedes-Benz. I don't like Tesla. Well, you gotta like, this is better than a Mercedes-Benz. This is not. I don't want no car that... If I gotta, I gotta charge it for it to work. I didn't want that. Girl, you need to be grateful that you got a damn car. I, I could have, I could have just been walking. It. I would rather walk in. Why? You, you should be happy. Be grateful. You can put your, put the keys back in your purse. Oh, and I will. And don't and ask me for nothing this. else. Oh, you gonna be happy with that money? How much is this? Girl, open it up and stop being ungrateful. Cause now you starting to be ungrateful. Where you ain't gotta worry about me I ever never again. I said I wanted a Tesla. You, I always told you I wanted a pink. Mercedes-Benz. Okay, well, I, I couldn't get the Mercedes-Benz, so you and got then, that. this is all you gave me for my sweet 16 and my golden... Girl, do you know how much money that is? That's $1,600 for That's 16... That's it for my sweet 16 and my golden birthday? Well, you what know, did you like, want? And then you gave me the truck I... This is the car. It's not the truck. This is the car one. You guys, look. You can have all your gifts back because why would you do this? This is my sweet 16 and my golden birthday, and you gave me a car I didn't even want, and then you gave me little money you was being really really ungrateful you can give this to your mom <laughs> this is ridiculous well it looks like that little five-year-old boy is going to have a brand new tesla never been driven before because she hated that car now i see the comments a lot of you are saying well who cares i hate teslas too that's fine you may not like a tesla but on your 16th birthday my dad wrapped up the car keys of the family car in an old wrapping paper and put a bow on it and handed it to me. I was like, oh, come. I was a little ungrateful at that situation, but I still drove it every day. She does not want the car and she doesn't want the sweet $1,600 cash for her sweet 16th birthday party. Now, we all know that a Karen is a white racist woman who like meddles and gets annoyed and just causes problems, but there's no term for a black annoying woman who causes problems and makes everybody upset. But we have to name them. So instead of a Karen, I think it's fair if we say a Kanene. Would you agree she is a Kanene to the fullest? A Kanene in training. Because she's only 16, it's only going to get worse when she gets on Spirit Airlines and starts flying around with the rest of us as a full-grown adult. Okay. Look at her. She should probably walk or ride a bike. She does not need a car. That was so mean, but guess what? We don't have to be nice all the time. Not everyone has to be nice on TV shows. Now look, I want you to order the new one hour comedy special. That's me telling nice, fun, friendly jokes for 45, 50 minutes, and it is a lot of fun. It's called Essential. You can find Essential on KvonComedy.com. It's right there under the shop. It's the newest offering. Here is a little clip that I posted this week as one of the TikToks. YouTube calls them shorts. Instagram calls them reels, and this is real funny. I also believe there are three groups that don't need the vaccine. I'm not a scientist. I'm going to say there's three groups that don't need the vaccine. If I say this online, I get banned. So hear me out. This is for private use only. Group number one doesn't need the vaccine. If you got COVID and you already recovered naturally, you're good, right? You're good. Nat your body, your body fought it. That's a group. Second group, truckers. <laughs> truckers. They kept wanting to vaccinate the truckers. I'm like, their whole damn job is in quarantine. Leave them alone. 
That's a quarantine ass burp, burp. Anyone hang out with truckers? No, you don't. And the third group that does not need the vaccine, nobody talks about this group but me. Kids that went to the McDonald's Playland growing up. <laughs> Thank you. You know who you are. Where's my Playland kids? McDonald's Playland, right? Look it, there's a lot. We're already immune to everything. We went to a fast food restaurant for amusement. I hope you enjoyed that. Please check out more on caveoncomedy.com. Folks, that is the end of The Right Show. Quick, painless, and a lot of fun. We tell truth through comedy. We make people laugh and wake people up with laughter. We're hanging out on uh, Locals just for a moment after this, if you want to go over there. And I want everyone to put your email in the newsletter in case like I get banned on Facebook or YouTube just for coming up with the term kanene. So we never know what could happen. So I want to put you uh, onto this. Go on k-vonncomedy.com slash newsletter. Put your email and I give you a comedy clip once a month and one free ticket every month. That's 12 free tickets a year. If you're able to attend a show, visit your local podcast subscriber. Give us five stars. And if you're listening to this on YouTube or just listening to it as a podcast on iTunes, go in the description, click the link, and you might be able to watch along with us next time. That is how we do it. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you all next week. Thank <laughs> you.